Good evening, everyone. Please get settled. We'll start in a few minutes. Thank you. There are lots of seats available to the left and to the right. Please get seated. All right, so <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Welcome on this New Year's Day to mark new beginning, the opening of this wonderful new facility, the Balwantrayan Brampat Lecture Hall. Usually, you know, in these kind of inaugural ceremonies, the inauguration is done before people enter in, but somehow the way this whole occasion was designed. We are all in the space already and we are using it. So to mark the formal inauguration, we would begin with the lighting of the lamp. And for that, may I invite uh, Sri Punit Lalbhai, Sri Rajesh Brambhat, uh, Christopher Beninger, Dr. Bimal Patel, and Anita Ben to come on stage and formally inaugurate the facility with the lighting of the lamp.
Thank you all. May I now invite Sri Puneet Lal Bhai to deliver the welcome address for this evening. Good evening, everyone. It gives me great joy today to welcome all of you here on behalf of the governing body and the board of management of SEPT. If I take my governing body hat off for a moment and just recollect my experiences of coming on this campus, everything from the buildings, from the great people that have led this institute, the stellar faculty, from the wonderful student projects that have been on display each year. All of this has spoken to me of a deep-rooted excellence, a spirit of excellence. Just before this, this function, I had the privilege of meeting some of the alumni who were from the earliest batches of the university. And the love and passion with which they spoke about the place. I met Mr. Kamal Sheth, who, we, when we were talking about the newly renovated building, said that I have my signature in this building. I drew the drawings for this building. This is my corner of the university. That sense of ownership is very rare to see. And this journey of excellence began in 1962 in a very unique way, where business leaders and professionals came together to build this university that espouses this excellence. And that process has been continuing. And it is the contribution of people like you, sitting in the audience that have built the university. I think it is appropriate to recognize those contributions today. At various points, we've been helped by individuals, by charitable institutions. We had Anil Bhai Bakeri, who helped us build the SBST building, Krishna Ben Shastri, the Khandwala family, the Kamla Ben Gambhir Chand Trust, the Sarojini Hathi Singh Trust for the SID building, the Lilavati Lalbhai Trust for the new library, the Ahmedabad Education Society, who is again a collection of citizens of Ahmedabad, that have contributed to many of the buildings here, and now the Brambhat family. As all of you will know, Mr. Rajesh Brambhat and his brother Rupesh Bhai run one of Ahmedabad's most premium development companies that have given Ahmedabad some of their most innovative projects, excellently designed, well-built buildings. And I'm sure that their contribution here in the building of, of this facility will lead, will, will continue that process of excellence and benefit many, many generations. So on, how, on behalf of, of the board, I would like to thank the Brambhat family and <laughs> wish them all the very best. And Thank you so much for, for supporting us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Punish Bhai. May I now invite Sri Rajesh Parampat to say a few words on this occasion and share his thoughts with us.
good evening everybody <clears throat> i am very honored and humbled to be part of the inauguration of balwant ray and brambhat lecture hall on the first day of the new year it is a special day and it has only been possible due to mr sanjay lalbe and bimal bhai they give me opportunity for this i also like to thank architect for the building mr christopher manager to create such a beautiful building i would like to thank students and faculty of sap university sorry faculty of the sap university present here i am very happy to share this moment with my family including my mother wife my brother daughters sister and their respective families and some of my father's close friend they are also here as we all know we are gathered here for the inauguration of this lecture hall i would like to share little things about my father here mr balwan bhai was a loving father a humble human being and a civil servant he was simple light hearted man he inculcated simplicity and empathy among our family he dedicated his life to gujarat police and taught us importance of giving back to the community he passed away in 2013 but not from our heart and memories so when bimal bhai mentioned about this lecture hall we understood this opportunity as a way to take part in a progression of this prominent institute b safal has always contributed to a social issues of healthcare and education in the city and will continue doing so moreover i have also fond memories of sept from my days of student at ld engineering college sept has continued to increase my curiosity and love for architecture and design throughout the years as it has also contributed to the city's urban fabric i would like to conclude on an emotional note the other day me and rupesh my brother <coughs> we are sharing memories about my father rupesh mentioned that on the other end of this road inside navrangpura police station lies a list of incumbent police officers who served there this list list includes my father's name and now to have a remembrance of father at this prestigious university across the road is honor and proud for my family <clears throat> I hope that this lecture hall contributes to the education and ambition of students of SEPT, and I would like to wish them best of luck for their future. Thank you, and very happy New Year to everyone. <clears throat>
um, I applied for a Fulbright Fellowship to go actually to Bangladesh, at that time East Pakistan. And I won the fellowship, but then the government said you can't go there because there's too much violence and um, there's a revolution taking place there. So some of my professors at Harvard said, well, we used to live in Paris with this guy called Doshi, um, who worked with us with Corbusier. Why don't you go to Ahmedabad? So I came here and um, spent a year here teaching. Uh, the first time I ever taught was a studio here. I don't mind saying in that one studio, I had people like Suresh Berry, who became a very well-known architect. I had uh, Amita Rajay. I had uh, Mickey and Madhuri Desai, Casey Deroga, just in a small studio of 12 people. Uh, Shalat uh, became the principal of uh, MS University of Baroda. So this institute put out people just in that one class who had an impact on society. It transformed them. So while I was here, I received a telegram that I was accepted for a position I had applied for to teach at Harvard University. So I go back to Harvard. I had been working on a PhD at MIT in urban planning, and I'm happily teaching there. And uh, after a year or so, I became a tenured assistant professor. Now, at that time, a tenured professor was a life-term uh, employment. You would have to do something pretty scandalous to be asked to leave the university. So my father, who was a professor, was happy. Everybody was happy. Christopher, age 26, 27, became a tenured professor at Harvard. Then along comes a person called Balkrishna Doshi. He said, you know, when you were in Amdam, we drafted out a proposal to start a school of planning. And we sent it to the Ford Foundation, to the government of Gujarat in India. And they want to do it now. But our problem is there are only three qualified planners in the whole state of Gujarat. Uh, Merwada was the chief town planner of the state, and Deshpande was the chief, uh, Dr. Deshpande, transportation planner, and the, I think Opte was head of the Gandhi Nagar project. So there was nobody, so they said we can't start the school because everybody has said there has to be somebody with a degree in town planning. So I thought about that, and a few days later, Preston Andrade from the Ford Foundation came through. And he put a notice that anybody who would like to talk to me, um, I'm from the Ford Foundation in Delhi. So I thought I would just pop in and say hi to this man, who I had met once in India. So we chatted, and I left the room. And I came back to the room, put my head in the door, and I said, incidentally, if there's any opportunities in the promised land, let me know. He said, are you serious? I said, yes, I'm serious now. He said, come in. He said, but you just started becoming your tenured professor at Harvard. You've finished all your coursework for a PhD. You've passed your exams for the PhD. You just have to write your thesis. Would you really do them? I said, somehow, my year in Ahmedabad in 1968-69, I fell in love with the city. And I fell in love with India. And I fell in love with all the people I met. I would really like to go back. But let me talk to my professors. Now, interestingly enough, all of my prof senior professors at Harvard and MIT said, get out of here while you can. You're 28 years old. If you can found an institute at age 28, get out of here. Go to India and start the school of planning. So here I come. I came, first of all, overland. Took a charter, Harvard charter flight to London. Came from London all the way to Bombay, stopped and spent eight, eight weeks teaching a studio with Doshi here. And we discussed the whole idea. And I said, OK, I'm quitting my job in Cambridge, and I'll be over here uh, by September. So I left and came back here, um, met interesting people, met Louis Kahn, who was working at IM, of course, Doshi, and uh, many transformational people here on the faculty. Doshi, obviously, was one. Hasmukh Patel was another, Paraji Sagra. Uh, many other people uh, in this city started having a big impact on me. By the time we set up the school and say about five years had passed, I didn't want to go back to America. So I decided to stay in India, and I've spent since 1971, I've been in India for more than 50 years. Why am I in India for 50 years? Because of this institution. This institution transformed me personally from somebody who could have still been teaching at Harvard as a retiring tenured professor, probably written some books and maybe done some buildings on the site. But I would have been sitting in Cambridge, Massachusetts. But because of the School of Architecture, because of SEPT, because of the university, because of the people here, it transformed my life. 
And I know there are people sitting in the audience whose lives were also transformed. So that was kind of a story. But the second story I want to tell is how institutions like SEPT transform cities. Now, when I came to Ahmedabad, it was a mill town, maybe 100 textile mills, give or minus some, and a trading center, a city, a city of workers, a city of banyas, a city of people who were good at making money. But something else was happening in 1971. You had Atira had been recently found. You had BM Institute of Mental Health. You had NID. You had SEPT. You had all kinds of institutions blooming over here. This mill town suddenly became an idea center. It became a place generating knowledge, generating action. People from all over the world started to come to this mill town. And the town was literally transformed by people like the Laobai family, <clears throat> like uh, other people. Chemin by Laobai brought Corbuzzi to do the Sanskar Kendra and Tagore Hall. And you had people really contributing to this city. And the city was transformed, I think, by the patrons and by the institutions and by the institution builders. It's a very small percentage of the population of the city literally transformed the city. And the people who studied here, they've had a great impact on the city as well. Um, I won't go into the details, but uh, my friend Basada sitting here, I think almost single-handedly he wrote the dossiers to make this a uh, UNESCO heritage city. So that's an example of how one person changed the city and put it on the world map. And there are many others here. Um, Kirti Shah at Asag and uh, Rajesh at Vikas no? made a huge Im impact in the city. I don't need to mention our president. His impact in the city is amazing, and I think it's a model for the whole country. So institutions like SEPT have an impact on individuals, many, many of them, probably a thousand people like me have, have been, their whole lives have been molded and changed by SEPT University. They have an impact on the city, the rapid bus transport system here uh, was started by Sri Vanan, one of the faculty members here, and that spread across the whole country. Which brings me to the third point. Institutions like SEPT have an impact on nation building. When I came, as I said, villages in India had no contact with cities. Things changed, it became globalized, and uh, suddenly we were connected with the villages, vice versa, through, through internet. Another thing is that if you see the books on architecture and planning that have been published in the last 20 years, see the list of the authors. No? I would say 90% of those authors were either students here or taught here. 90%, you, you take books of any depth on architecture or planning, they were published by people who taught here or studied here. That's a huge impact on the nation. That's a huge change. I always said that SEPT is the best school of architecture. I've been on the board of... Uh, governors of SPA Delhi. I've been very deeply involved with uh, JJ School of Architecture. I think these three undoubtedly are the top institutions of architecture. But without question, SEPT is the leading institute of architecture planning design. And I think we should all be proud of that, that this institution has had an impact on the entire nation, the way people think, the way people talk about architecture. The other thing is that people like Bimmel have done projects like the Sabarmati River, which I think is a great project, like the Central Vista, I think is another great project. I did the capital plan of Bhutan and built the Supreme Court there and other buildings now. So these kind of projects evoke debate. Suddenly in the last five years, you find for the first time in India, design has become a topic for societal debate, political debate, economic debate, now, sometimes we may, as designers feel uncomfortable. Even this complex, when we started it, there was a huge amount of debate over it. No? But, but I think it's fantastic that people stopped talking about all kinds of social issues. I mean, they kept on talking about them, but they started talking about design. And they started debating that. And so design became an issue in the country for the first time. And I think it's people here at SEPT, uh, people who taught here, people who work here, who have had an impact on the nation. And I think that's very important. Now, it was actually a great honor to be asked by the Brambat family and Dr. Patel and the Laobais to design this complex. As I said, 
Um, my career started here, and I think I'm the only person, I, I dare say this, I think I've been involved with SEP since 1971 continuously, in some capacity of the other, either starting the School of Planning, or they made me a distinguished professor, along with Doshi and Dr. Alec, and then I came back in the board, and now I've designed this. So really, for half a century, I have been involved in this institute, and it's been a, a cornerstone of my life, actually. I think it's very important. So let me close by thanking you a few people. I hope I don't miss them. But uh, there are people sitting here, like Dilip Patel, who was my guide when I was designing this and lots of practical things. Uh, Arthur is sitting over here. He was chairman as a faculty member. Uh, Arthur Duff was chairman of the committee uh, that guided me on this. I had people from my staff, like Rahul uh, Sati, who's sitting here, one of my directors, and Shivaji Karakar is sitting here someplace. He was the man who did every, I think he's drawn every brick in this building. He's drawn every single brick. And we've argued and discussed and, and we've come here during construction and changed many, many things. Ismit Patel, she designed the furniture. Now in case you think that she designed the furniture because she's the wife of the president of the university, let me take that idea out of your mind. Ismit did her training under me 41 years ago. And when I suggested to Bimmel, I want my Ismet, not your Ismet, to do the furniture, he said, no, no, I don't think it's a good idea. I said, I don't care what is your good idea. She's a designer I've known for four decades plus. She has to do my furniture. So Ismet made a huge contribution. Ashish Jani was on this site every day, uh, working with uh, PSP Patel Group, and uh, they had a great group of people working here, Lalji Bai and uh, Kalji Bin. They were on the site till sometimes midnight. The contractor's team were here till midnight. They used to sit and have dinner on a table out by where you see this um, water tank. Bhargav uh, Tiwar was very helpful. Uh, I would forget people, but Mike, structural designer, Arnold Shaw is important, and Pr Pramod Singh, who did the MEP, and Sri Ramji, uh, who did the acoustics, uh, were all people who were part of the team. So there was a big team working on this and the studios across the street. And we tried many things. We tried casting uh, murals in concrete. We put colored glass. You'll see if you turn off the lights, you get a lot of interesting light coming in. So I think this is the 25th uh, amphitheater or auditorium that I've designed. And I honestly think it's the best one. I, I don't hesitate to say that. You feel close to the people in the back row. You feel close to the people you're talking to. And I think it's something very unique. And I think it was because of the partnership between the clients and between uh, our team and the contractor. So thank you very much. It's a great honor to have designed this complex. And thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, Professor Benninger. I think it's the best auditorium ever, perhaps. And uh, we're, we're at least all very happy with the facility. And I, I think it's a great new addition, and it will get even more used as we start going further uh, post-corona. So we are all looking forward to that. Thank you so much. May I now invite Dr. Bimal Patel to deliver the vote of thanks. Good evening, everybody. I have two things to do. Uh, before I go on to the vote of thanks, let me just, on this occasion that we are inaugurating the Balwantrai N. Brambat Lecture Hall, I want to remind ourselves of the values that we hold dear at SEPT, and in that way, renew our commitment to those values. First of all, I think uh, Punidvai already mentioned, the first most important thing about SEPT is that it is a collaborative. It's a collaborative between the business community of Ahmedabad, the professionals of Ahmedabad, the professionals in the building world of Ahmedabad, and the government of Gujarat. All three play an equally crucial and mutually respectful role in enabling and nurturing this institution. 
it is in the best collaborative traditions established by Gandhiji in the early part of the 20th century and continually nurtured in Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad is special. Not too many cities are able to do this sort of a thing. I want to take this opportunity to remember a few of the people who have nurtured SEPT in this collaborative fa fashion. First of all, chairpersons and board members, I'm not going to mention everybody, but I think we have to remember uh, Kasturbai Lalbai, Sharnik Lalbai, and now Sanjay Lalbai, who have been terrific stewards of this institution. They have held its values in place and supported it through the last 60 years that SEPT has existed. On the board, we have many stellar people. From amongst those, I'd particularly like to mention Sudhir Bhai Mehta, who has always been available to SEPT for all sorts of help. Praful Anubhai, Naishad Bhai Parekh, who is here, and our own alum, Achal, Achal Bhai Bakeri. They've all, they all give freely of their time they all support this. This is why SEPT works. There is no other magic to this. SEPT has had some great leaders okay, heading the institution. For the first 10 years, Professor B.V. Doshi led the institution and created a terrific institution here. After that, my father, Hasmukh Bhai Patel, for the next 10 years, led SEPT University. And that was another important period of its development. Following that, Rasubai Vakil led the institution for many years. These are all very important people. They were all mainstream practitioners and they have given a lot of effort and energy to this institution. The founders of the various faculties at SEPT, first one to start with is the architecture faculty. We have Professor B.V. Doshi, Bernard Cohn, and Rasubai, three of them got together and started the Faculty of Architecture. Christopher Benninger, along with Professor Doshi and others, started the Faculty of Planning. Professor G.N. Tambe, Rasubai, and various other people were responsible for starting the Faculty of Technology, as it is called now. At that time, it was called School of Building Science and Technology. After that, Krishna Ben Shastri played a absolutely important role in starting the Faculty of Design. They, are, they, they were all wonderfully started because they're all thriving now. Many full-time teachers, adjunct faculty members who commit a part-time role at SEPT, and many visiting faculty members contribute to this place all the time. We have at this point of time perhaps 250 people coming here and teaching in part-time capacity, and we have almost 100 people who are teaching in a full-time capacity. I cannot name all of them. There are many architects, many engineers, planners, interior designers, landscape architect, artists, social scientists. Everybody comes and gives a little bit. It's not easy to make a great institution. Lots of people have to contribute to it. And finally, the government has been extremely supportive for SEPT right throughout. To start with, we are a university because this was a university created by the government of Gujarat and was extremely supportive in creating this university. For a long period of time, we were getting financial support, though now we don't get any financial support. We are also proud of the fact that we don't have to ask for financial support. We manage our own resources. But for a long time, we got financial support also. SEPT has always been seen as a special institution by government of Gujarat and given a very liberal treatment, especially, I think, because they recognize that this is an institution that belongs to Gujarat. It's a gem of Gujarat, and that is why they are quite liberal towards us when it comes to doing anything for us. Finally, government of Gujarat granted us the status of center of excellence uh, a few months ago, and so that is also an important thing. So the business community, professionals in the building world of Ahmedabad, and actually the country now, uh, and the government, all come together to make this institution possible. This is a unique experiment that has thrived and lived for 60 years. So that is first important thing. SEPT is a collaborative. SEPT is also widely owned. 
I think this also Puneet Bhai mentioned. Yes, it has certainly been supported in large measure by Ahmedabad Education Society, but a lot of other people have also contributed to it. Okay? And that tradition continues. We had first of all Anil Bhai Bakheri, who helped build, who financially contributed to the institution by helping build the building for the School of Building Science and Technology. We had Krishna Ben Shastri, Khandwala family, Kamala Ben, uh, Gambir Chand Trust, and Sarojini Athi Singh Trust, all of them contributed to making possible the School of Design. Lilawati Lalbhai Trust helped us make our new library. And now, last but not the least, Rajesh Bhai, Rupesh Bhai Brambhat, and the whole Brambhat family, you have made possible this wonderful facility as yet. On behalf of entire SEPT community, Rajesh Bhai, Rupesh Bhai, and the Brambhat family, thank you very, very much. So as I, say, as I said, SEPT is a widely owned institution, belongs to the city at large, and that is why it thrives. It's not narrowly owned. It belongs to all of us. SEPT has also always been a cosmopolitan institution. From its inception, it's been a cosmopolitan institution. After all, one of its founders was a Frenchman. Okay? This is not a provincial, small, narrowly focused institution. It's an institution where everybody from the world comes here and our people go all over the world. It's an institution that is at home in the world. It is not a Gujarati institution. It belongs to the whole world and it's happy being that. When I joined SEPT here, I studied here, I joined a long time ago, it was a wonderful atmosphere to be in because there were students from all across the country. And as a consequence of that, I have now deep friendships with people all across the country. And that is what is extremely important for any institution. We cannot afford to be a Gujarati institution we have to be an institution that is cosmopolitan, where students can come here and learn about many, many diverse ways of doing things. We don't have, there's no one way of doing anything. That's what we learn. For a while, we were under threat. Our cosmopolitanism was under threat because we were allowed to admit only students from Gujarat. And so 10 years ago, we were slowly becoming a deeply Gujarati institution, which was bad for, for Gujarati students. So we went to the government and requested the government that we want, we don't want to reduce the number of students who are from Gujarat, but allow us to expand our programs and get as many students from other parts of the country, which the government generously agreed to. And now, once again, I must say, more than half our student body, certainly a large portion of our postgraduate students and half of our undergraduate students are from all over the country and sometimes even from abroad. So this is a cosmopolitan institution, and that's its important character. I hope it never changes. It's also an inclusive institution. We strive to ensure that no one who merits to study at SEPT is not able to do so because they cannot financially afford it. We do this in a number of ways. We work hard to keep our costs low. We, we, we think we have a Gujarati knack for doing that that we don't spend too much and get value for money out of every pie that we spend. And we have kept our costs of education low compared to many private institutions, design institutions across the country. We also make a lot of money available for scholarships and for tuition waivers. In fact, 10% of all the fee that we collect is distributed to needy students at SEPT. So that's about seven crore rupees that we spend in scholarships and tuition waivers. So all those who need money, we want to ensure that they can, they're not stopped from studying at SEPT because there is no money. We, we also provide opportunities for students to earn while they, while they learn. We have many programs in which students can take up jobs as research assistants, as teaching assistants, as even for working in the library, working in various, in the archives, in various institutional roles, and we pay them generously so that they can get a little bit of money. And there are many needy students in our country. Even SEPT's low fees 
are unbearable, unaffordable for, for large sections of our students. So we are, we are, we, we are very thankful when, when we get support of the kind that we have received to create such a wonderful facility, uh, uh, you know, a world-class facility, so that some of, the, some of the poorest of students can enjoy great facilities. So SEPT is an inclusive institution. We always want it to be inclusive. SEPT also has had a very important value, which is to respect the autonomy and individuality of students. You see, everybody, everybody from Ahmedabad uh, knows that SEPT has a culture which is very informal. You come here, you can barely recognize the difference between teachers and students. Sometimes people who come from outside. Once I had a, a commandant of the army visiting here and I took him around for a walk and after a while he stopped me and said, nobody seems to care that you are the head of SEPT. I said, yes, that is how it should be. We have an informal culture here. We do not believe in hierarchies. We believe in a work culture which, which, is, which, which, is, which is inclusive in a way. But we also respect autonomy and individuality of students. We treat students like they're adults and we give them a choice-based curriculum. This is an idea that has, this is all Amer anybody who has studied in an American university knows exactly what this is. You see, we allow students to learn within limits, to learn what they want to learn, when they want to learn it, so that each student's trajectory through SEPT is freely chosen and unique. They, they choose what they want to study to a, in a large measure. So this is the way we train our students to be free and responsible people. Okay? We think that freedoms and responsibilities go together but the best way to build responsibility is to give freedom to the students. So this is very important for us. SEPT also respects and cherishes freedom of expression and the virtues of diversity. We have not let ourselves become a monoculture of aesthetic, a monoculture of aesthetic of political views. We encourage a great diversity of teachers to teach and for them to stick to their views and say exactly what they want to say. We have become neither a monoculture of the left or a monoculture of the right. There are many people who disagree, faculty members who disagree with each other. We think that this disagreement is central to SEPT's uh, functioning. Last but not the least, I think once again Punidvai mentioned this, SEPT has always stood for the pursuit of excellence. We always want our students to excel. Even as we have promoted values such as equality and justice, we have not let ourselves lose sight of the fact that it is equally important to uphold a meritocratic culture and to pursue excellence. So we don't let our standards get lowered. Every semester, we have the work that our students do reviewed by an independent panel of people from all across the country. We have a large exhibition and our student work is reviewed by people who are not connected with SEPT and they come from outside SEPT and by and large we try to see that they are people who are not connected with SEPT, have no connection with us. They are from the professions. They are the people who are going to hire our students. And we want them to tell us whether the students are actually learning and whether the student work demonstrates that learning or not. Okay. So we take a lot of effort to continually ensure that standards are kept high and that the pursuit of excellence is alive at SEPT. The student exhibitions at the end of every semester are terrific opportunities to see what our students are doing, what SEPT is doing, and I'd welcome all of you to come here. Now, before I end, I must give thanks to all the people who have contributed to this facility and today's event. First and foremost, I say once again, but Rajesh Bhai Brambhat, Rupesh Bhai Brambhat, whole Brambhat family, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you very much. You have done 
a great honor to set by this gesture of yours. I'd like to thank architect Christopher Benninger, also a good friend, a good friend of SEPT, a good personal friend. Thank you, Christopher. <coughs> Lovely facility. In your team, there was Shivaji Kharekar and Rahul Sate, both of them. Uh, thank you very much for your role in this. There were a number of consultants involved. The structural design was done by Anal Shah, Pramod Singh and Prithvi Singh, Varsha, Karnavat, Kavandi, okay. V. Ajay, Nirav Maniar, and Ismat for the furniture. Thank you, all of you, for the wonderful work you've done. You know, no building gets done unless the client, the architect, and the contractor are all pushing in the same direction, and all of them have a single project in mind. So I cannot, I must thank P.S. Patel and his team, Laljibai Patel, particularly for the stellar work they have done on the various buildings on our campus. Thank you very much. There was a number of other people there involved in their team. Kalgi Patel, Apurva Patel, Niket Patel, and Shweta, all of them have contributed tremendously. We have a terrific campus architect who facilitates, well, a lot of the work that's done here, some of it he manages himself. Dilip Patel, thank you very much for making this possible. The campus office, the campus estate office, is the one that maintains our entire facility. You might have got a chance to see it, and that is extremely important. Bhargav Thevar is a faculty member, manages the campus office. Uh, he teaches in the Faculty of Technology. Ashish Jani, Chirag Dave. Sudeep Vishwakarma, Keur Bhai Parikh, Ajay Patil, Devyesh Sharma, and Rajesh Patil, all of you, thank you very much for the work you do. I also want to thank all the people who helped organize this event. Prince Anuroy, Santosh Zokarkar, Hemant Tejal Patil, Ajay Patil, Devyesh, and Rajesh Patil. Thank you very much. With that, Shirayu, on to you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Vimal Bhai. And with that, we come to the close of today's event. I'd like to thank you all for joining us at this momentous occasion of the inauguration of this new building, the Balwantra in Brambat Lecture Hall. And with the lighting of the lamp, we have now thrown it open for our collective use. So thank you once again. We look forward to your visits when we are holding lectures or other public seminars here. And we hope we can keep having this connection, though, you know, the, the cloud of corona is not yet gone, but we hope very soon that will be over and we will again be able to convene in this facility. So thank you, have a good evening, and we see, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. May I request the Rambert family to please come on stage, we'll take a picture.